In this video, we will be testing a series and shunt regulator. This is a motorcycle generator that is connected to a motor to simulate a running motorbike. This is the voltage regulator. We have a temperature readout attached to the voltage regulator. This is a standard motorcycle battery. Attached to it is a multimeter to display the voltage at the battery terminals. Finally, we have an amp meter on one of the stator wires to measure current through the generator. Now we will start by testing the series regulator. Before we begin spinning the generator, you can see that the battery voltage is just under 13 volts. The ambient temperature is 38 Celsius, or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and there is zero current flowing through the stator. We'll pause it here for a second. As you can see, now that the generator has spun up, the regulator is controlling the voltage at around 14.3 volts. The temperature is holding, and there is about 1 amp through the stator. This is power that is going towards charging the battery. As we continue, we will turn on a light to simulate the bike's headlights and put more load on the generator. Now, the current has gone up to around 6 amps through the generator, and the temperature and voltage are still about the same. In a series regulator, stator currents are proportional to the load. If there is no load on the stator, there is no current flowing through it. Low stator and regulator currents allow them to run cooler and be more reliable. Now we will be testing a shunt regulator. Again, before spinning the generator, the battery voltage is just under 13 volts, the temperature is 43 Celsius, or about 109 degrees Fahrenheit, and no current is flowing. With the generator spinning, the shunt regulator is again controlling the voltage. However, you notice that with only the battery charging, the temperature of the regulator has already climbed 7 degrees in a matter of seconds, and there are 20 amps flowing through the stator. This is because the shunt regulator controls the voltage by dumping extra current back to the generator, causing both the stator and the regulator to heat up. With the light on, the current and voltage are holding, but the temperature has gone up above 64 Celsius. In a shunt regulator, stator currents are always high regardless of whether there is a load or not. These high currents cause the stator and regulator to run hot. This wastes energy and can lead to higher incidences of the regulator or stator burning up. As we continue testing, you can see that the shunt regulator easily reaches temperatures above 74 Celsius or 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, we have a chart showing the load versus the power dissipated in the generator, comparing series and shunt regulators. This data comes from a research paper titled AC Series Voltage Regulator for Permanent Magnet Generators. The paper will be linked below. The red lines are for the shunt regulator. Regardless of the load, the shunt regulator is always drawing high currents, leading to a lot of power dissipated in the generator, which just gets turned into heat. The blue lines show the series regulator. At high loads, it performs about the same as the shunt regulator because all of the current is needed to drive the load. However, for series regulators, the current draw is proportional to the load. Under low loads, it draws low current and dissipates less power in the generator. 